Bach, the B-flat major prelude of book one of the famous collection of the Well-Tempered Clavier on an approved 18th century style harpsichord. But the music that Bach wrote reached beyond instruments. He composed music with no assignment to any instrument, purely abstract, as in the musical offering and the art of the fugue and he frequently reset the same music for different instruments of totally different textures and sonorities, such as the organ, violin, harpsichord, and even the voice. There are so many examples of differing settings that from this practice alone, and there are other reasons as well, must emerge the conclusion that the instrument, its sonority and texture, was secondary, the music primary. In this sense, I view Bach's music as abstract. It requires no specific sounds to stand strong in any culture. Yes, Bach, in my view, is on the frontier of the future. It may come as a surprise to learn that he may be regarded in this way, but in actual fact, he has been on the frontier of the future since the opening of the 20th century, when the interest of composers leaped back in time, rejecting the immediate traditions of the 19th century. Schoenberg could not have existed without Bach, nor could James Joyce. Schoenberg wrote in one of his books, the preliminary exercises in uh, counterpoint. There is no greater perfection in music than in Bach. No Beethoven or Haydn, not even a Mozart, who was closest to it, ever attained such perfection. This perfection is one of idea, of basic conception, the natural consequence of the profundity of the idea. Schoenberg was not referring to sounds and instruments. He was concerned here with idea and organization. This is one reason why Bach stands at the frontier of the future. This abstract quality makes possible the performance of his music on instruments of every new age. But there is more to it than that. I believe that art on the whole, and the music of Johann Sebastian Bach in particular, is essentially an art of organization. Coupled with the fact that Johann Sebastian did compose so many of the same works for sonorities and textures of polar differences, in his own sense of organization of the elements with which he worked. I have made a chart which shows the organization of a Bach fugue. Bach's sense of organization can be perceived here by those who cannot read music as well as those who can. These are the rhythmic patterns of the fugue. The organization of the three motives in relation to each other creates the fugue. There is no elaboration, no free counterpoint, no other notes of any kind in the entire fugue. These three motives are employed continuously with no change. What then makes this a fugue or a musical composition of any kind? instead of a repetitious continuation of copies or clones of its three motives. The organization of these motives in relation to each other. It becomes a work of the purest ingenuity and genius and of great musical charm as well. 
due only to the particular placements of the elements, which are the motives, in relation to each other. That is organization. I shall play it on the harpsichord and you will hear an endearingly charming work. of the harpsichord is produced by a plectrum which is at the other end of the key which when struck has the plectrum come up and pluck the string that is the essence of the harpsichord action and tone the clavichord is an entirely different kind of instrument here you have a brass tangent which is very narrow but flat at the top and when the key is pressed the tangent comes up and vibrates the string as on a, a violin thus you have a most wonderful singability a very sensitive touch a very intimate and personal quality to the tone and there is possibility of very personal playing, not at all the crisp, bright tone of the harpsichord at all.
Now we come to an entirely different kind of work. The 29th variation of the Goldberg Variations. And I will play this on three instruments to demonstrate the possibilities of the original structure in these various sonorities and techniques. in composers' circles today that Schoenberg, who changed music irrevocably with a new sense of form and organization, referred to Bach as the first 12-tone composer. He did, in fact, say this to me at the time that I studied with him. And he pinpointed a specific work as the first 12-tone composition, the B minor fugue from Book One of the Well-Tempered Clavier. This is its subject, the chief motive of the fugue. I have marked the 12 tones traversed by the subject. I'll play just the exposition for you, the entries of this subject in the four voices in which the fugue is composed. You will hear that the organization of these four parts in relation to each other produces an idiom far from classical and romantic organization of tonal music. This type of organization, which is Schoenberg's interest and those of many other composers, has thoroughly entered the consciousness of all the most advanced composers of the 20th century. It more than trembles on the precipice of atonality. This fugue just enters the realm of eight tonality.
settings for different instruments are not transcriptions. They are individual instrumental settings valid in their own terms. And the fact that they work on different keyboard and other instruments demonstrates that the primary con composing conception is organization and not music as sounds requiring specific sonorities and a particular instrument. Now I'll demonstrate a totally opposite type of composer, Chopin, as a piano composer who is totally dependent on piano sonority. And then I shall, with the best will in the world, play the same excerpt on the Moog. This is impossible. Chopin was not capable of writing that kind of abstract music. The idea that Bach lived too early for the piano must be dispelled. He knew of it, approved it, and in fact, occasionally sold pianos. Here is a copy of a receipt, which was first published in a Polish journal, Musica, in 1967. It shows that Bach sold a piano a forte to a Count Bronicki of Bialystok for the price of 115 Reichsthaler. And below, in different handwriting, you will see Bach's signature. This is absolutely authentic. Bach's genius was what is usually called of a universal kind. Specifically, his genius generated so many ideas that there are portions of his work that sound like the work of later composers. For example, Mendelssohn. Atmosphere of Debussy in the A minor prelude of Book Two. And later, the Stravinskian style in the fugue of Book Two, A minor. And this is most suitable to the avant-garde instrument, the polymog.
organization is non-material, non-physical. The advanced thought of our time in the scientific disciplines are increasingly concerned and dealing with non-material processes in the universe, such as the multiple manifestations of energy in the non-physical complexities of the human being as well. This brings us inevitably to the wonder of life and to spirituality. And that is another major aspect of the ground that Bach shares with us in our intellectual, aesthetic, and spiritual movement into the future.